Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today we are going to talk about the pipe. What's a pipe and how to use it? So actually pipe is one of inter-process communication between the process. When we want to communicate to other process, the pipe is one way, just like a signal. Pipe is one way you can use it to communicate to different process. So it's not, not like a thread because thread can share the data inside a process, right? But if you want to communicate to other process because the process, they have their own independent virtual memory. So you cannot easily share like global variable, static variable. You cannot share this kind of information. You need a way to talk to other process. So there's a couple way to do it. You can use signal, you can use socket. And today let's talk about pipe. So what's a pipe? This is one example. We have a pipe, we use a pipe in your like a shell. So your shell program where it's deal with this, uh, uh, this command, you try to like uh, write two command. So for these two command, you can imagine that uh, your shell will call uh, a program to deal with the LS. That's the LS program used to deal with the LS. And that's another program called WC to, to like a, uh, uh, execute to run this WC command. So you have two program to run two different command. And these two program means two process. So you have a process one here, you have another process two here. And when we say pipe here, means we want these two process has communication. So actually when we have this special symbol here, means we want to get the pipe. So what's a pipe here? This pipe means we want to get the data, the output from the first process and send it to the, the, the another process, the second one. So actually we got LS. LS try to bring out everything in this directory. So try to list everything in the directory. And how do it, how it's list? It will bring out everything to the same output. So if you have a pipe, the data from the same output will go to the pipe. So this pipe created by your shell. So this pipe will get like this data and pass this data to another process. So when you use another process to receive this data, we use standard input to receive it. So in this case, you can use LS and pass the data from LS output as the input for WC. So your WC can use the input to execute this command wc dash l. So in this example, you know, the pipe is unit direction, just one direction, okay? The pipe should be unit direction. You should not send data back from the SD, uh, from wc back to ls. No, you should not send it back because it's just one unit direction. So this is the like a kind of a background, like a, the knowledge, the basic concept for this pipe. When we use pipe, for each pipe, we use unidirection. So when we send the value out, we should not receive the data from the same pipe if I want to receive the data back from another process. Okay, so this is a, the basic concept of pipe. So how we actually create the pipe in your program? It's not so hard because there's a system code called pipe system code. In this system code, you only need to pass an integer array. So this is the integer array. You pass the integer array and the size of the array should be two, okay? Should be two. You pass the integer array uh, size of, of two to the system code. The system code will automatically generate file descriptors assigned to this variable. So inside your array, inside your array, this special array, this will, as a pointer, so this will point to a file descriptor, an open file table. This is will open uh, like a point to another open file table. So you can imagine that these array both are file descriptors. Okay, so why we need this? Because when you do a pipe, actually your pipe creates a very, very special like a structure here. So the first file descriptor used to receive data. And the second file descriptor used to send 
data to the pipe. So actually, after you create the pipe, you can send the data and receive the data by yourself. So this is the pipe, okay? So again, for a pipe, when you use a pipe, the system to create it, it's actually generated one direction pipe for your uh, program, for, for your coding process. And this coding process will use a second file descriptor to write the data into a pipe. After your coding process write the data to the pipe, the coding process can receive the same data from the, the first file descriptor in the pipe, okay? So this is how the pipe works when we code this pipe system code. So, okay, so here, if we, we know, we understand the background of this, how we can actually use it. It's useless, right? Why I need to send the data to myself? I want to send the data to other process. I don't want to receive the data sent, like, uh, sent by myself. It's useless. So actually, if we, you understand this, this part, then we can use something we cover in process, the fork. What's a fork? Fork another child process, right? So let's look at this example. So first of all, we have a pipe. So we create a pipe here. We use a pipe system code and we place an array. So this is an array, integer array, it has two elements. So for this array, we can see we actually have a, a process. Let's say this is a process one. Process one, you create a pipe. So there's a pipe here. So the pipe process one, give a, um, let's say this is a array, array zero, array one, array zero, array one, array one, for writing, array zero for, the, for reading. So you create a pipe. So right now you have a pipe here. You can send the data, like uh, send the data and receive by yourself. Then after you do a pipe, you do a fork. So right now you can do a fork. So after you do a fork, what happened? We do a fork, actually you fork a process has the same content as your process. So you copy everything, including the file description table. So the content of file description table will be set. So which means each file descriptor in the new process will reference to the same open file table, open file entries as a parent process. So actually you create a, another process called process two, which is child. So create the process two. And this process two, because you create it after you do a pipe. So the process two can remember every contents of this stuff because they it's also have a backup of this uh, variable, these file descriptors table, it have every information it needs to access to this pipe. So actually, if you understand this part, you will see there's another part here. It's still use ARR1 and AR0. But remember the AR1 here and AR1 here, they are different. They are, they are, they are not the same. The content is the same, but they belong to different process. So each process got a copy of this pipe array. And the content, the, the content, the value of these elements is the same. So they refer to the same pipe, okay? So still you can write and read data from process two to process one. Okay, so if you understand this part right now, you can actually write the data to the process one. The process two write the data and the process one can read. Or you can do another way is like, uh, I have a process one, I'll try to write the data, then process to read the data. So this is how you use the pipe. However, remember the pipe should be one unidirection. And I will tell you why we need it to be unidirection later. But right now, remember, we want to make it a unidirection, just one way to do it. So in this case, how should we do? We should close after we do a fork, after we do a fork. If fork is um, child, if fork not equals zero, this is parent, this is parent, this is parent, this is child, 
Okay, so if if fork equals to zero in short process, then you should close something. For example, if we want this pipe for a uh, parent to child, if this pipe is is parent to child to child pipe, if we want to do it, we should say okay, let's close because this is a parent process. The parent don't need to receive, so we close a r r uh, zero because we don't need to receive. And for a child, we close a r r one because for a child, it won't write data to the uh, to the parent. In this case, actually, we remove this part and this part. We make the pipe unit direction. So we only get one way from process one to process two. Okay, so this can make our process like a process communication by only one, use one way, direction, one direction, unique direction is pipe. Okay, so another way, if we try to like uh, send data back from our process two or your child process back to process one, how should we do? Actually, if you want to do it, we should pro provide two pipe two pipe data. So we can have a pipe ARR and pipe ARR2. So this is the second pipe. In this case, we create another pipe here. This is pipe two. And because you created pipe one pipe for pipe two, then you should have something like a original before you close. Before you close anything, you should have, uh, you should have something like this. And your pipe one, you have something like this, okay? So if you, before we close anything, you should have these two pipes. And right now we make each pipe one direction. So we close the uh, the read part uh, from the parent for pipe, pipe one. And we close the right part uh, from the, uh, to the uh, on the child process because for a pipe one. For pipe two, uh, this make the pipe is uh, parent to child. And we need another direction is from child to parent. So in this case, we need to close what? We need to close the, the, uh, the right part from the parent to a child. Then we close the uh, read part from ch on a child from parent. So in this case, you can use this way, this pipe two, to write data back to your parents. So in this case, we should have a close here, ARR1, AR2, one. And here, close ARR2, uh, zero. But here's the things. Please make sure your pipe is one direction. Okay, please make sure your your pipe is one direction. Because if it's not one direction, some terrible, some bug might happen. What's a bug? Let's see an example. So we have, assume we have a, a pipe here and we have a process one, process two. They both can read and write. So let's see what happens here. If if you did not, if you did not close the right, okay, if you did not close the right, assume we already closed the read. If you did not close the right, so what happened? First one, inside a P2, we will try to read the data. So we will have a read. We will try to read the pipe uh, because it should be uh, zero, right? So we will try to read the pipe zero. and. Usually when we try to write the, the pipe, try to write the information, try to write the file, we use EOF to, to, to determine, to determine it's finished, right? We use EOF to decide, okay, I already finished your reading. So I just finished. Because pipe is there, pipe won't be disappear. Pipe won't disappear if your data, if your process does not send any value to a pipe. So actually pipe is here. So when you receive a EOF, when your pipe, uh, when your P2 receive a EOF, if your process one, your parent 
close this uh this channel, close this pipe, then you will receive your EOF. So the P2 only receive EOF if there's no right end of this pipe. If no process can write into this pipe, then the P2 will receive EOF. Otherwise, the, the P2 just try to read and try to wait. I'm waiting for data. Even though the pipe is empty, the P2 will still try to wait for the data. I'm waiting for you, please send me a message. But the P1 close the, the pipe, then P2 know, okay, P1 already closed the, the communication. So I should not uh, continue. I should get the EOF. This is the idea. But if you don't close, if you don't, if you have two right part here, even though you close P1, you still have another right part from the P2 to pipe. So your reading part from the pipe won't detect the, the EOF because the, the reading part of P2 expect some data might come from the writing end of uh, this pipe. So it's cause you never receive EOF in your reading part. And you probably just wait forever. So this cause bug. So this is also why we say you should make the pipe one direction. If you don't make a process, uh, the, the pipe one direction, you might got this bug, okay? So again, it's very important to make your byte, your pipe unit direction. Okay, so similar, similar stuff might happen if we did not close the read. If we did not close the read, our pipe will be here and you have uh, two read here and your, your P1 try to write. In this case, even though, even though you, this process finished the, the reading. So which means the P2 already stopped communication. I don't want to read. I think it should be fine. The P1 won't note the reading is complete. It still try to like write a lot of stuff because you, you still have a one reading part. Okay, so usually if the reading, the reading, uh, the reading part in this pipe is closed, your and your P1 try to write something, the P1 should receive a signal to tell the P1, okay, you should stop because the receiver already stopped the communication. However, because you still have a redundant another receiver here, you try to read this which means you never receive this uh, signal. You never receive this interrupt. You will keep writing value into a pipe until the pipe is full, until the pipe is full, until like uh, the resource is full. So this is also not good if your receiver already terminated, already stop the reading. You should also stop your writing. This is the idea why we have to make the pipe unit direction. Again, unit direction. If you want the pipe communicate to each other, you should create another pipe and use it to send message back to the process, okay? Each pipe should be one unit direction. Hello, Joe, I have a question. I, right now, I know it's very important to make a pipe unit direction, but I have a question about, can I use pipe to communicate with any process in the systems? I don't think so, because when I use pipe, I have to fork a child process. Then I can use a pipe to communicate this child process. If I don't have a child process. The other process won't know where is the pipe. What's a pipe? They don't, they don't share the same file descriptors uh, value, right? So in this case, how I communicate to other process? Yes, this is very, very good questions. To using the pipe here, uh, 
you cannot use this pipe to communicate any processing systems because you have to use the fork to generate another process. So both process can share the pipe you created. Okay, so in this case, in the example we have here, we call it unnamed, unnamed pipe, which means we have another pipe, different pipe is called name pipe. So these two pipes are different. We use online pipe to communicate between the process if the process has some relationship with each other. For example, parent and child, for example, grandparent and grandchild. In this case, you can share this information out of the family. But if you want to communicate with some other like a process in assistance, you don't have any relation to with this, you should use another pipe. It's called name pipe. What's a name pipe? We will cover, we will talk about it in other videos. So let's look at, look at uh, the source code, a simple source code about how to use a pipe. So inside the source code, you can see, we actually create a, a parent to child pipe in this uh, example. So we want parent to talk to the child. Of course, you, if you want to receive the data from a child, uh, you need to create another pipe called child to parent pipe. But here it's just one direction, parent to child. Child never responds to a parent, okay? So we, we, we create an array. It's an integer array with two elements. Then we use the pipe system code. We pass this array. So in this pipe system code, it will automatically generate the file descriptor for these two, uh, for these two elements. For, for these array elements, okay? Then we have a PID equal four. So we create, we create a child process. And if, if this child process equals zero, means this is children, this is child. If this is a child process, we run this. Otherwise we run another one. So you can see actually for this one, we run a child task. So we run a child task here. We run a parent task here and we try to pass the parent to child pipe zero because the child is reading from a parent. Zero is reading, one is writing. So we pass the reading part, the reading end of this pipe to the child task. Then we pass the writing part to the parent task. But before that, remember, it's very important to keep the pipe one direction. So we need to close the reading part, reading end, of the parent process. And we close the writing part for the child process, okay? So this is the logic of how you do it. And actually, if you want to, uh, if you want to see the task, this is the task. The task is simple. For a parent, you get the message, say hello from parents, and you try to write this message to the file distributor you pass in, which is the writing end of your pipe. Then you write this data to your child. And inside here, your child receive it, receive it from this file distributor, the reading end of the pipe. Then store this data to this buffer, which is called to message. Then after that, you uh, try to like print out something and uh, print out a message. So this is a source code. You use a parent task and child to child task. And the parent process task try to write data into the pipe and child task read the data from the pipe, okay? So if you understand this part, let, let me like try to uh, do it, okay? So I run GCC, um, the pipe example, and I call it pipe. So if I ask you to the pipe, you will see the message. The parents send a message, the parents send this message. How many bytes is right to the, to the pipe? 19 bytes and child process receive a message. How many bytes? 19 bytes. What's the message? Hello from parent. So this is a very simple example how you communicate with two process. After you fork, actually during the independent process, right? You can still talk to this process by using pipe. This is more useful than signal because you can send any information you want 
to your parent process or child process. You can say hello from parent. You can say hello from child. You can say, this is Joe. You can send any information you want. So this is very, very good way if you want to do the communication between two process in your local machine. But remember, this process should be related to each other. They should be on the family. Otherwise, you can not use this unnamed pipe to communicate. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Today we talk about pipe. Pipe is very important and useful way to communicate between the process. Uh, use a pipe, that's one key important you need to pay attention is you need to guarantee the pipe is one direction, unique direction. You need to close uh, the writing end and reading end on different process to make sure this pipe is one direction. And before you use the pipe, before you actually use a pipe, you need to declare it. You need to create the array. You should not create this pipe, use a pipe after you fork process. Because after you fork the process, the pipe won't be shared by two process. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And pipe is really useful and keep use it if you want to do a process communication, okay? So see you next time. Process communication with pipe is awesome.